Welcome to CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. You know that phrase, killed in the line of duty? It's one of the saddest epitaphs to those who lay their lives on the line. A guard, a night watchman, a cop who was shot while on duty. You've seen the photographs in the papers of a long line of policemen standing in sorrow at the funeral of a buddy. Have you looked closely at the expression on their faces? I might be next, it says. Yet... They do their job every day, every night, to make our lives safer. They didn't believe me, the judge, the jury. I was there. It wasn't George who pulled the trigger. He was with me in the cabin. It was Rudy, my brother, who killed your detective. Yeah, that's what you said in court. George didn't kill that man. I swear it. Now, why would I say things against my own brother, accuse him of the murder if it wasn't so? Maybe because you love George Collins. Our mystery drama, The Missouri Kid, based on an actual documented historic case, was dramatized especially for Mystery Theater by James Agate Jr. and stars Lloyd Batista. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It was in all the newspapers of the time. The St. Louis Post-Dispatch headlined the robbery, Memories of the Missouri Bandit Days. Today, through the miracle of radio, we can turn to that story and actually hear it happening. It is three days after Christmas, 1902. Fifty-five miles out of St. Louis, about an hour past midnight... Two men ride into the little town of Union, Missouri, and head for the Union Bank on Main Street. Stand in that doorway opposite the bank, George. If someone moves, shoot. Nothing I like better, Rudy. I got a belt full of bullets. I ought to have this piggy bank busted wide open in five minutes flat. Hey, got your crowbar? Got it. I sleep with it. Hand me the nitro. It's in your saddlebag. (laughs) Here you be. Now... Hello, Rudy. I sure aim to. Hey, what's going on down there, Sheriff? Someone's just blown up the bank. Well, I'm going to give him a blast. Come on, come on, Rudy. Now, hurry. We get the whole town's waking up. Hold the horses still. Those hicks can't hit anything. Help me load these money bags on the horses. Hey, someone just put two holes in my hat. Now, there's the second bag. You keep it back, George. Do I have to tell you everything? Grab this bag, will you? Hey, now, how many hands do you think I got? Lucky. Most of the money's in bills, not silver. That's it. Five bags full. Now, let's get out of here before their aim gets better. Come on, get out there. Sheriff? Hey, hey, Sheriff, they're gone. Look at all that smoke coming out of the bank. Now, someone get the fire department. Looks like the bank's on fire. Well, do something, somebody. The Union Bank's just been blown up. Uh, Mr. Pinkerton, we just got a wire from the American Bankers Association. Two men blew open one of their banks the night before last... Got away with $28,000. Uh, who is the law there? Oh, Tom Birch. He's the sheriff of Union. Any word from him? Well, the phone there. He's been sick for a week, so nobody's made up a posse. And the robbers got away. Are they sure there were only two? Yep. 
I made a mess of Main Street between them. All right, CJ, it's your case. Find those two robbers and find them good. <laughs> Not fast. <laughs> yeah, find them good and fast. Sheriff Tom Birch. You're looking at him. Well, I'm C.J. Schumacher. The Pinkertons have assigned me to the Union Bank robbery. Oh, glad to hear it. We're still cleaning up the glass and picking bullets off Main Street. Yeah, we heard in St. Louis there was a quite an exchange of gunshots hereabouts. Well, they rode out of here like there was hellfire behind them. Anybody in town see them? Oh, sure. Uh, let me see now. Well, uh, there was Frank. You know where I can locate him? Oh, I expect he's at work. He's the blacksmith, Frank Tilly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I spoke with him on the telephone. Well, he'll help you. He's a good man. I brought a parcel of pictures of known bank robbers who operate around these parts, and identification is essential. Sure is. So you, you think it was the work of professionals? Oh, without a doubt, Sheriff. Only pros know how to handle nitroglycerin. Yeah. You go see Frank Tilly. Uh, tell him I said he'd better cooperate with you Pinkerton fellas. Frank Tilly. Huh? Oh, yeah. Now, what is it? Well, I'm C.J. Schumacher of the Pinkerton Detective Agency. Oh, about those bank robbers. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, if you're busy, I'll come back later. No, no, no. Let's head for these barrels over here. Set yourself, Mr. Schumacher. Uh, what can I tell you? Well, I brought this satchel full of pictures I'd like you to have a look at. What we at the agency call our rogues' gallery. Mug shots of every outlaw, professional, train, and bank robber we ever had dealings with. Uh, now, if you just have a look. Oh, I don't have to. The man was wearing a mask. I never did get a good gander at him. But the other one, I saw him right clear. Oh, that's fine. There's a gas lamp right outside the bank where they had the horses hitched. And son of a gun, if it just didn't blow out. I seen him come out of the bank and all that smoke blown, and he's... Loading up the horses with the bags of money. I recognize him straight off. Well, who was he? Bill Rudy Rudolph. Know him anywhere. Rudy Rudolph. Ah, the Missouri kid. That's the one. Ah, the Missouri kid. Yeah, he pull a job like this. Well, you you don't happen to know where he's been living these days. Do you? Well, up in the standings, as far as I know, he's got a cabin there. His sister's place, actually. She's a real nice girl, Nellie Rudolph. But she could never do anything with him. You know, Rudy's a real tough hombre. You don't aim to go there and take him along, do you? Well, that's what I aim to do. <laughs> you Pinkerton fellas have all excitement. Well, sir, I hope you get Rudy. He sure has been needing the comeuppance for many a year. And so I hear tell. Well, it's about time somebody laid a hand on his shoulder and cuffs on his wrist. My name's C.J. Schumacher. Who do you want? Hi there. Who are you? What business is it of yours? Shut up, Butch. Shut up. Oh, I'm sorry. Looks like I knocked on the wrong door. How do you know? Who do you want? Well, first off, I want a friendly hello. And, well, I think I come to the wrong house for that. Sorry, ma'am. What do you mean, I'm unfriendly? Well, um, I've been hunting all day, and... I had me the worst luck any hunter could have, so so the last thing I need right now is someone who's suspicious. So long, ma'am. Now, wait, wait. I, I'm sorry. It's the nature of us around here. Were you looking for someone? Well, I'll be honest with you. I, I'm kind of lost, and, I, and I'm hungry, and what I was looking for is to buy some supper. Oh, well, just a minute. Hey... There's a hunter outside. He wants to buy some supper. Should I let him in? A hunter? Yeah. You sure? Well, pretty sure. He ain't no city dude by the looks of him. Mm -hmm. What do you say, George? Well, why not? I'm getting stir-crazy with just you two to look at. Wouldn't mind seeing another face. What if he's the law? Hmm. I sure wouldn't want to be the law stepping in here all alone. Okay, now. 
Tell him you'll make him some supper. Uh, sorry to keep you, Miss... Uh, what what you say your name was? Uh, Schumacher. Oh. <laughs> I'll never pronounce that. I, I had to ask my brother and his partner. Well, is it all right for me to buy some supper? Well, I'll wrestle you up something. It'll cost you 50 cents. <laughs> Done. I sure couldn't cook myself any decent grub for that. Ma'am, that was mighty good. I'm always partial to a stew made of a ham knuckle bone. Mighty tasty. Uh, would you oblige me one more thing? Well, that's all we got. Except... Oh, no, no. I don't mean any more food, ma'am. I'd like to know your name, that's all. What fur, mister? Well, if this is your wife, no harm, man. Only when folks treat me right, I want to thank them by their name. Well, she, she ain't my wife. She's my sister, and her name's Nellie. My uh, wife or sister, <laughs> she's a mighty fine cook. Uh, mind if I sit a while? I've been 20 miles today with no luck. Uh, uh, ho hold on now. Well, what are you reaching for your gun for? <laughs> well, force of habit, I guess. Uh, are you the uh, brother of this gentleman? Hmm. He wants to know a lot about us, doesn't he? Oh, just trying to be friendly, uh, Make conversation. We don't make much conversation out here, and if you really want to be friendly, mister, I, uh... I suggest you take those shells out of your shotgun. Oh, why, sure. It, uh, makes me nervous. Oh, glad to oblige. <laughs> those shells didn't do me much good today, I tell you. Would you like some canned fruit? We got some canned peaches. Sure would round things off to have something sweet. Mighty good of you, Miss Nella. I, uh... I appreciate that. So the, the hunting's not too good today, huh? <laughs> the whole day's been a bust. I, I fired this jackrabbit, see? Then I go up and take a look for it, and, and there's this trail of blood. And, and I think to myself, when well, there's too much blood for a jackrabbit, maybe hit a bear. Mm, ain't no bears in these parts. Uh, well, maybe a deer. Mm, could be a deer. Here's your fruit. Oh. Thanks, miss. Well, sir, I hadn't shot no animal. Somebody been making a campfire. I left this can of tomatoes. And I, <laughs> I plugged it. <laughs> Scored a bullseye. Knocked it clear off the ground 50 feet, leaving a trail of tomatoes. Well, <laughs> oh, well. well, I think I'll be moseying along now. And, well, thanks very much for the meal. Uh, hold on, mister. You just sit back and relax. Why, you ain't touched those peaches Nellie brought you. Now, that's, that's not nice. Not friendly-like. Eat up. I got a few questions I'd like to ask you myself. Uh, George, ha hand me that pistol. I'd just like to have it in my hands here while I'm talking to this here gentleman. C.J. Schumacher, the Pinkerton operative, sat back in the kitchen chair in that out-of-the-way cabin, his own shotgun empty, the bullets jingling ineffectively in his pocket. He faced a loaded pistol and two of the most wanted outlaws in America, the Missouri Kid and his partner, George Collins. C.J. wasn't sure the other man was George Collins, but he was pretty certain that if he didn't come up with the right answers they'd kill him without a second thought. I'll be back shortly with what happened in Act Two. C.J. Schumacher, the operative for that great private detective agency, the Pinkertons, was tracking down the desperados who had robbed the Union Bank of Union, Missouri. He had inveigled himself into their hideout by pretending to be a hunter who wanted some supper. Unquestioningly, the two men who sat watching him eat were the men he was seeking. Now the problem remained how to get away alive so that C.J. could return with an armed posse. You had much book learning, friend? Who, me? Book learning? Yeah, you mean did I go to school? Well, folks do. Now, I went to school. Didn't do me no harm. Oh, sure. I went to school when I was little. You uh, done much reading, Mr. C.J. Schumacher? Reading. Well, some. Mm -hmm. He means if you see a handbill for a wanted man, can you read it? Where would I see that? Oh, 
Well, anywhere. Uh, in a post office or a bank, for instance. Oh, not me. I don't write letters, and I, I don't get letters. Well, I, I think I'll be moving along. Miss Nellie, here's your 50 cent. Uh, thank you for a right good spread. Oh, <laughs> made up for my disappointment hunting today. Well, goodbye, Mr. Uh, what was that name again? Uh, C.J. Schumacher. Schumacher. You're not from around here? Well, not far. Not far, but take me a couple hours to get back. Well, good night, folks, and thank you. Mr. Pinkerton, I came just as fast as my horse could get me here to St. Louis. Welcome back, C.J. Your brother Danny was getting a little worried about you. It's about time Dan learned worrying is something an operative just doesn't have time to do. Yeah, but I have to admit to you, I was a little fussed a while back. I was having me a bite to eat with the, the Missouri kid and his sister Nellie Rudolph and the, the kid's partner, who I think may be George Collins. I'm sure it's them who did that Union Bank job. So I'm planning to go back to Union tonight. Get up a posse and haul him in. I wish we could, C.J., but we've got no prima facie evidence against Rudy. One man recognizing him across the street under a gas lamp is not enough. I uh, read your report. Yeah, what, what about the old uh, torture robbery charge? Remember that old couple, the Hollises? Rudy and some other gun boy tortured the old man and woman with hot pokers to make them tell where they'd stashed money. Turned out there wasn't any. Ah, that's the answer, C.J. You find your sheriff, swear out the warrant, and get going. Oh, uh, by the way, your brother Danny wants to know if he can go along with you. Well, I'll tell him he'd better stay in St. Louis and help mine the store. Who knows? Maybe someday you'll find him more useful than me. Sure. I got your guns cocked. Sure have. So the rest of the posse right behind us. Sorry, all the roundup was three men. Well, we're getting closer now. Yeah. Tell the boys to slow up. Hey, take it easy, boys. Now, around the back of this clump of trees, there's a shack. It's the Missouri kids. Uh, I'm hit, CJ. Help me, give me a hand. I, I'm falling off. I got you, Sheriff. Uh, uh, Hold right. Uh, uh, Get out of here. CJ! Oh. CJ, what is it? I got, I got a couple of bullets in the stomach. If you can't, can't stay and, and fight it out, go on. Go on, leave me. I'll, I'll get away. Don't, don't wait for me. Shut up, bitch. You heard me? Shut up. Well, uh, what have we here? Our old friend, the jackrabbit hunter. Uh, Riding up here with a sheriff and a posse? Ah, that wasn't a very nice thing to do, friend. Uh, After all that good grub you had at our table? Well, i tell you what I'll do. You seem to be hurt bad uh, and in lots of pain. Why don't I make it easy for you? And put you out of your misery. Mr. Pinkerton. I asked Danny. What do we got there? A telegram. They... They killed my brother. Give that to me. Regret to inform you we have recovered body of C.J. Schumacher killed in gunfight with Bill Rudolph and unknown assailant. Oh, Dan, I can't tell you how sorry I am. I want you to call the staff, all the local officials of Union, and from Stanton, too, right now. I want them all here in St. Louis as soon as you can get them together. The world's not big enough to hide C.J.'s murderer. We'll get whoever it was if we have to keep looking for him as long as I live. Oh, Mr. Pinkerton, assign me to the case. I want to pick up where C.J. left off. All right, Danny, you've got it. Now, you round up everyone you can. 
When I've laid out instructions for a manhunt from here to California, then you can pick up the trail. I'm going back to that shack where they were hiding and, and see what I can find. You see, Mr. Schumacher, when we come back to find your brother's body, the shack was empty. It all pulled out. You know, C.J. was killed saving my life. That's how it was. He put me back on my horse when I got shot. He was one brave fella. Well, as far as you know, Sheriff, uh, no one's been back here since? Nope. Oh, we've been watching in case any of them do. Uh, but they lit out and took everything with them. Hmm. What a mess. Yeah. He went over this shack with a fine-tooth comb to try and find the money they stole from the Union Bank. You found nothing? Yeah, not a red cent. Uh, what do you expect to find in all that trash on the floor, Mr. Schumacher? Evidence. Evidence of what? Uh, anything, Sheriff. Where they're going, where they've been. Uh, like this. This medicine bottle, for instance. Now, see what it says on the label? Brewer's Pharmacy, Hot Springs, Arkansas. That might be some evidence. Now, I'm going to roll up my sleeves and take a look inside the stove. Maybe they burn something valuable. <laughs> You've got to get yourself mighty dirty cleaning out that stove, Mr. Schumacher. You know, I, I expect before this manhunt is over, I'll have more than cinders and soot on my hands. Well, is there anything I can do? No, thanks, no, Sheriff. Ah. Now, maybe... We, you find something? Huh? It just may be. Well, that little piece of burnt paper? Well, what is it? Somebody's handwriting. Hmm. So it is. Pretty fancy handwriting. You don't see much of that around. Yeah, that's just what I'm counting on. Tracking down those fancy curlicues might help us quite a lot. Can you find out what's written there? Mm, don't have to. Just find who wrote it. I don't care what you say, Danny. Evidence that'll stand up in court. That's what you must have. Proof. If I could have my way, Mr. Pinkerton, those two would be hanging from a lamppost, not hanging around in court. Danny, that's not the way our operatives should think, and you know it. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I just don't feel like a lecture now. Who brought in the evidence? Good evidence. The pharmacist in Hot Springs made positive identification. There were two men who went in for that prescription. One was Rudy and the other George Collins. Now, I myself checked every boarding house in Hot Springs and come up with a name on a boarding house register that matched exactly the fancy handwriting on that piece in the stove. Well, look at this. Army records. Description. Collins was a company clerk with Company M, 35th Infantry. Now, he had his handwriting was so good. Look, look, samples. Now, don't tell me I don't have enough evidence and reports. Where do they say Collins is now? Hartford, Connecticut. Now, I I've got our Connecticut operative trailing him right now. But where's Bill Rudolph, the Missouri kid? Uh, that, that I don't know. Can't you see, Danny, it's better if we wait until the two join up and then haul them in together. Now, you take Collins alone with that slim handwriting evidence, he'll get himself a smart lawyer and be out before you can say mouse. So you're saying wait, is that it? Wait? Well, I ain't going to. I'll take my chances and pick them off one by one. That's vigilante talk, Danny, not law and order. Well, maybe so. Due process of law is too slow for me. So, Mr. Pinkerton, I... I ask you to accept my resignation. Whatever I do, I do on my own hook. Well, I'm sorry you want to quit us, Danny. You don't seem to understand. This is not just another case to me. Those two murdered my brother. I know that, Danny. But are you talking about justice? Or revenge? <laughs> Danny Schumacher. Mr. Pinkerton, what are you doing here in Hartford? Oh, just watching you, Danny, standing outside this saloon. Oh, yeah, but why are you here? I thought I'd see how you were getting on. You've been following me? An old habit I got into. What are you up to, Danny? 
Well, I'm handling this on my own like I said I would. I don't know if you know it, son, but once you're a Pinkerton man, the only way to get out of the agency is horizontally or get fired. Well, you're not dead, and I don't remember firing you. You mean I can't quit? That's about the size of it. So I've come to Hartford to give you a hand. <laughs> oh, Mr. Pinkerton, that's great. L- listen, it's turning out like you want it. Collins is in there right now, buying drinks for the house. You should see him. Dressed fit to kill. And Rudy? He's in there with him. He came into town today. And they're having a high old time in that saloon. What are we waiting for, then? Let's just see if they come along peaceably like innocent citizens or uh, if they want to put up a fight. <laughs> Let me hear that sound of popping corks. Yeah. Who wants some champagne? <laughs> Anybody wants whiskey, step up to the bar. It's on me. Yes, you were right, Danny. I'd never recognize those two by their clothes. <laughs> like city swells. All right, you whiskey bums. Champagne first and then a chaser. <laughs> you ready, Danny? Can you take them now? When Rudy reaches into his pocket and starts counting money, you aim a couple of times at the ceiling. Yeah, how about some more champagne, Rudy? Yeah, bartender, bring us another case of it. Here's a hundred dollars. It's a hold up. All right, reach, everybody. Send those arms up to the sky. You too, Rudy, and you, George. It's the cops. It's, it's Pinkerton men. <laughs> Wait till I get my hands on you, Rudy. Get off of me. Get your hands off. You're joking me. That's... What I aim to do. Hands high, George. Okay, okay. You got me. My hands are up. All right, try these on for size. You don't have to handcuff me. I said I'd go quietly. Just in case you get any fancy ideas, George Collins, you're under arrest. Hey, will somebody get this big lug off my chest? Nice work, Danny. Pull the kid's hands up over his head. Uh, Let me get up, will you, somebody? By all means. Uh, Let him up, Danny. All right, everybody. Back to the bar. We've got the only two we came for. I don't know what you think you're doing. You got nothing on us. Ah, we'll see. Oh, Danny, I don't believe you two have been formally introduced. Danny, this is Rudy Rudolph, otherwise known as the Missouri Kid. We have a little torture robbery warrant outstanding for him. And uh, George Collins, I think you know. And my partner, gentlemen, is Dan Schumacher. That last name mean anything to you? Nope. Uh, Schumacher. Shut up, George. Uh, You don't know nothing. Dan Schumacher is C.J. Schumacher's brother. C.J., Rudy. The man you shot in cold blood. Do you remember now, Rudy? In a Hartford boarding house where Rudolph and Collins were staying, they found almost $9,000 from the Union Bank. The bank robbers were taken back to the town of Union, Missouri, arraigned on murder and robbery charges, and held without bail. But these two lawless men had not given up, as we shall find out when I return shortly with Act 3. Crime, the criminal, and women never ceased to amaze William Pinkerton. In writing about the case of the Missouri kid, he says that once Rudy Rudolph was in prison, women, not only in St. Louis, but all over America, made him their hero, wrote him letters, sent gifts, stood outside the prison walls just to be near him. Strange, the fascination of this cold-blooded murderer. All right, you guys, in twos, marked by twos. Once around again in the yard for exercise. Charlie Hopper, move on along. You too, Cassidy, move on. Nobody talks. No one talks. George, right behind you, Rudy. This crummy jail's too small to hold us. They searched me good in St. Louis. I couldn't stash a file the way I did in Denver. No file, huh? Mm, Not even a toothpick. Mm. You better get one. I asked the guard if Nellie could pay us a visit. He said he'd ask the warden. What is this, a tea party? You heard me. No one talks. You the exceptions around here? You may be the Missouri kid, but in here you do what you're told. And you're told no talking. It's all my fault, Guard. I was just telling Rudy I asked you yesterday if his sister Nellie could come see us on visiting day. And honest, that's all I was telling him. All right, all right. 
You got some rights, and I recognize that. George, how's Rudy? I thought, seeing as how I'm his sister, I'd be visiting him. Well, you're lucky they let you see me. Pinkerton phoned the warden and said if they couldn't put on an extra heavy guard to put Rudy in solitary. He's afraid he'll escape. Oh, that Pinkerton's my reader. <laughs> easy, easy. Molly, I think that guard is listening. Oh. Uh, you mean really, honest? You, you got all that uh, fan mail for Rudy. <laughs> all those letters. Uh, well, here, let me smell one of them. Wow, perfume. Hey, uh, guard, you want to smell these letters? Uh, can I take them? Parfumed letters for the Missouri kid. Yeah, I guess you can have them. I don't think a gun could fit in a letter. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Now, you're a wonderful kid. <laughs> and we'll do what we have to do. You haven't much time. George, they've announced the trial date. Oh, don't worry. When that trial comes up, we'll be reading about it in the Arkansas newspapers. Arkansas? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Indian territory. Yeah, yeah. Like last time. The only safe place to hide out. Oh, George, I'll miss you so. You will? Mm -hmm. Say, uh, am I crazy or do you like me? Oh, don't you know that, George? One more minute. One more minute. Visiting hours are over. Don't, don't I know that? Well, how, how I feel about you all these years. Well, <sighs> all these years Rudy and I have been together, will I... <laughs> To me, you were like a kid sister. Oh, well, look at me, George. I'm 18. Do I look like a kid sister to you now? Well, no, you, uh... Um, I can't say that you do. In fact, you look real good to me now. Do you know what I'm hoping? No. That's all, folks. Uh, and all the visitors, please rise and form a line to the door. That everything will turn out all right. That you'll get out... And then go straight, George, for us. Keep moving, keep moving. I thought you were in solitary. <laughs> they only had one cell, and it was occupied. Said they put me in there after the 4th of July. Did you, uh, get the fan letters? <laughs> yeah. And what was in them? Yep. <laughs> hey, you, no talking. You heard me, keep moving. Listen, I got to talk to you. Yeah, where? I'll find you in the mess hall. Keep a place on the bench next to you. I'll bring my tray over. No kidding, Rudy. You got it all cased out? Yeah. You know that top tier? Uh -huh. There's a there's a skylight over it. Now, it's up through the skylight, over the roof, and out. Cassidy, he, he works in the warden's garden. He gave me the angle of the roof slant. Then... Across the chapel roof, down into the warden's backyard, and from there, right into St. Lou, and we can get lost in the traffic. What time you picked out? After the roll call at 12. In the afternoon, about 3. The streets of the city would be crowded then, you know. Okay. Now, when? Guess what? Big holiday's coming up. The 4th. The 4th of July. A lot of guards will be off duty. I'll have my door filed and ready to go. I tried it already. It cuts like butter. I just got to figure out how many steps from my cell to the top tier. And then, how far from there to the skylight. What about me? You've got the only file. How do I get out of my cell? You won't even be in it. The morning of the 4th, you'll have an attack of appendicitis and be screaming with pain. You'll be in the infirmary. <laughs> I can feel that appendicitis coming on right now. <laughs> here, here. They'll slip some money in those fan letters. Now, you take it. All of it. You pay off a bunch of the guys to start a fight at the far end. The other end from the skylight in the prison hall. Now, remember, 3 o'clock, the afternoon of the 4th. Sharp. Oh, I... <laughs> Can't you see those dumb guards thinking there's a riot running over there? Yeah. <laughs> I figure that'll give us just about enough time that we'll need to break out. On the 4th of July, too. Boy, what a day to celebrate on. Uh, come on, get some of those cars moving up here. We got a riot. Hey, 
George, you with me? Right behind you, Rudy. They took my clothes away in the infirmary. All I got is this nightshirt. Okay, now grab a hold of these girders and follow me. Now I'm going to swing my legs up and smash that glass skylight. Okay, let's go. Come on, George. Take my hand. Now go on. I'll hold you. Now up you go. I, I, I don't think I can make it. Oh, sure you can. <laughs> now, that's it. Now, now, climb along the roof behind me. Okay. Now, watch your step. <laughs> they haven't any idea we're gone. Which way now, Rudy? Over here at the edge. Now, from this roof to the chopper roof, right? That's 50 feet. I'll never make it. Oh, cut it out. It's only 20. You say. Oh. You go, Rudy. I, I can't make it. Oh, come on. I can't. I can't. What are you, just scared of high places? Yes, I always have been. Well, all right. So long, George. Now, listen. If anybody comes through that skylight, you just hold them off long enough till I'm out of sight. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Ready? One, two, three. Oh. Yes. Oh, Rudy. Look at that. You're hanging upside down. Uh, what are your feet caught on? Oh, Dad burned wires. Somebody strung wires up here. Nobody told me that. I got to, I got to get loose. Give up, will you? Your face is all cut. If, if you fall on your head, don't, Rudy. Don't. Uh, I'll make it. I got to make it. I'll just untwist these wires. I'm on the top of roof now. Now pray for me. Good luck, George. It's not as though you didn't warn him, Mr. Pinkerton. They'll try to escape. You knew it. I knew it. Oh, it makes me so angry. Well, at least they got Collins back. You, uh, have the detailed report? Well, haven't you seen it? No, I haven't. Read it to me, Danny. Well, evidently the kid was cut and bleeding. Got tore up on some wires strung across the roof. He jumped or fell from the main roof to the chapel roof. Then down that and into the warden's garden. Then walked in the unlocked back door where the warden's mother was ironing. She said he bowed to her and walked out the front door. Uh, next report, uh, on the corner of Spruce and 11th, he steals a bicycle and heads into the middle of the city. The next report, a, a rowboat stolen in North St. Louis. Uh, presumably, he rowed across the Mississippi. Let's see. Next, uh, a man answering Rudy's description... Gets out of a freight car in the Memphis Railroad Yard. All the way to Memphis, huh? That was yesterday. Yes, and I'll bet you anything we'll get a report he's stolen a horse somewhere in Tennessee and he's headed for Arkansas. Yeah, right to Indian Territory. We always lose those bandits in Indian Territory. Yeah, I'll take out, Danny. It won't be for long. He's not the kind to spend time hiding. If I know the Missouri kid, he'll be back in this neighborhood knocking off another bank. Our chief weapon now is to circularize every spot in every state with his picture and description. Sooner or later, he'll surface. Uh, Mr. Pinkerton, Rudy's sister's outside. Nellie? Yeah, she wants to see you. She's uh, pretty wrought up. Well, I don't know what she thinks I can do for George Collins. The jury's still out. Shall I send her in? Um, yeah, all right. Oh, and I guess you'd better leave us alone, Dan. Oh, Miss Rudolph, uh, Mr. Pinkton will see you. Oh, come in, Nellie. Why, you look much younger than you did up there on the witness stand. They didn't believe me, the judge, the jury. They didn't believe anything I said. I'm afraid they had possession of certain facts and certain witnesses. What witness? I was there. It wasn't George who pulled the trigger. He was with me in the cabin. It was Rudy who done it. He walked right up to your man and killed him. I know, Nellie. That's what you said in court. But what can I do? I know George has done a lot of wrong things, but he didn't kill that man. I'm not the jury or the judge. Why would I say things against my own brother? Accuse him of a cold murder like that if it wasn't so. But your brother isn't here to defend himself. He's hiding out somewhere. It's possible the jury will believe you. But maybe they'll figure you're making this up because you're... Well, because you're keen on George Collins. I do love him. I'm not saying I don't. But he didn't do it. It's out of my hands. <laughs> Nellie, why don't you go home? All I can say is... 
Just try to let all of what's happened be a lesson to you. You think it's too late, don't you? That they'll convict him? Even if George Collins were to walk out of that prison a free man, I'd tell you never to see him again. Try to start over, Nellie. You're only 18. You've got a whole life ahead of you. Good morning, Mr. Pickerton. Well, what are you so bright and cheery about? Well, I don't like to say I'm celebrating, but I guess in a way this news makes me feel real good. All right, spill it. Well, for one thing, it's almost a year since George Collins was convicted and hung, and we kept trying and trying to find Rudy. And we will keep on trying. Well, I think our luck has changed. He's come out of hiding, and he's done exactly what you said he would. Here's the telegram. Hmm? Call to your attention, prisoner Charles Gorney apprehended an attempt to rob Lewisburg, Kansas National Bank. Comparing your photographs of William Rudy Rudolph, alias Missouri Kid, not satisfactory identification. However, Bertolin measurements, particularly scars, mole on upper lip and two gold teeth, closely resemble Gorney. Kindly advise Sheriff Pioli, Kansas. What do you think? Well, of all the bank robbers in the world, the likelihood two men would have the same scars, the same mole, and the same two gold teeth is just not possible. That's just why I feel good today. That's right, Danny. I think we've got our man. And indeed they had. Charles Gorney turned out to be none other than Rudy Rudolph. It had been a long and costly trail. And had it not been for the cooperation of every local and state law enforcement body, the Missouri kid might never have been caught. You may say this proves crime does not pay. However, for the Pinkertons, who spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to wrap up this case, crime can be very expensive. I shall return shortly. It was May 1905. 52 months after the cowardly murder of Detective C.J. Schumacher that the second outlaw, the Missouri Kid, died at the end of a rope. It was also the beginning of a tradition followed to this day. If a lawman is killed in the line of duty, none of his brothers will rest until the criminal is brought to justice. Our cast included Lloyd Batista, Ian Martin, Robert Maxwell, E.V. Juster, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more,